So in today's video, we're going to be having a look at three knives, all made by Victorinox. Uh, they are not the only Victorinox knives I own, but they are particularly useful, uh, both in terms of daily use, in terms of bushcraft, and in terms of repairs and practical usage. A lot of knives that one might collect are very limited in their use. These as you would expect in Swiss Army knives, are very useful for a wide range of things. Now, they fall into three of the different size categories made by Victorinox, and although I wouldn't necessarily recommend you get all three, certainly one of them may be very beneficial to you. Which one? Well, you need to look at your own circumstances and needs and decide from there. So without much further ado, Let's have a look at what we've got. So, uh, there is that other video that you can watch. However, uh, I have added one extra little modification to this one that's worthwhile. And if you haven't seen that one, we'll just go over the features very quickly first. Uh, to begin with, you have the small blade, uh, which, yes, it's very small. It's also probably the one that I use the most. It's extremely practical. Then, next, we have the large main blade. Next to that, we have the file, which can also be used to saw through metal. Next to the file is the standard Victorinox wood saw. It's a push-pull design and works extremely well. You then have the fish scaler with ruler, which has inches on this side and centimeters on that side. Uh, I particularly find myself using the ruler more often uh, than the fish scaler as such, but it is actually quite useful on that level. Victorinox scissors, which are, as everyone has ever used them will tell you, really rather good. This small pair of pliers uh, is smaller than a lot of the pliers you will see on multi-tools. However, if you are lifting something hot off of a campfire, for example, or if you're turning really a rather a lot of nuts and bolts, this works extremely well. It also has a crimper, and over in this one space here, you have a wire cutter that'll cut up to a one millimeter wire. Next to this, you have the magnifier, which works extremely well, and I use that at work all the time. And you have the Phillips head screwdriver, which locks or semi locks in the, the 90 degree position here or the 180 position there. Quite useful. And then, like almost every Swiss Army knife, you've got the tin opener with small screwdriver, as well as the bottle opener, larger screwdriver, and wire stripper. which again, actually also will do the 90 degree position, so you can get a little bit more power. Uh, hidden on this particular one, underneath the saw and the fish scaler, which both have to be open to remove it, I have a small ferro rod, one of the fireflies, which fits right nicely into there, and when that's Inside, if I close these, I can open one or other, it won't fall out. But if I open both, I have a fire starter in there. In the corkscrew, we have the small screwdriver, ideal for eyeglasses or other tiny screws. And I keep an aftermarket thing. This is the spiral tinder, which obviously fits onto the corkscrew, making the corkscrew extra useful because... Uh, that will easily be useful for starting at least one, if not two, fires. And it's 
fairly water resistant and will help you even start a fire in the rain. On top of that, the next thing we have is the small chisel. Uh, if you're doing bushcrafting and you are using that chisel to uh, make the, the bowl of the spoon, for example, it's incredibly useful. And next to that, we have the 90 degree small screwdriver, which is again quite useful. We've got the hook. And you'll notice that I have a small magnet with a small loop which fits into here rather nicely. Uh, this magnet is silver on one side and has red ink on the other side. That came from a, a red permanent marker. And that means I can attach this to a... It can be used as a pickup tool, but I can also use this as an emergency compass by hanging that from a thread. It is necessary when you are closing that hook to do it slowly if you've got that in there otherwise uh, it can jump out on you but otherwise it's a useful thing to have stored in there and of course we have the awl which has the hole for sewing and this will drill small holes in wood or be used for emergency sewing of things like canvas uh, here we've got the standard victorinox tweezers as well as the toothpick. The Firefly is normally meant to go replace the toothpick, but I like that toothpick. I use it quite regularly, and that's why I prefer having that ferro rod hidden in there. And of course, it comes also with a small ballpoint pen. And if you watched my earlier video where I modded this, and took the red scales off, put the black ones on, you'll know that I also made a slot for a second smaller uh there is a hidden slot so i made the i opened that up so i could have the second smaller pair of tweezers which i then further modified and made them uh curved and this is again especially useful for removing stings and similar uh, i have added one oh yeah there's also where the logo was i've attached a small bearing and stuffed into that bearing right now, and if I can rotate this, you'll see that it does actually, it does turn. Now that bearing is meant to be used uh, when doing friction fires, if you're using bow drill, and that'll uh, act as a divot on the top. Uh, what you see there that's pink is from a small fire lighter, which I've chopped off a piece. It's a little bit greasy, not too much. But what I've done is I've stuffed it in there, and what that does is it keeps dirt out of the handle. So that's useful, and it gives me an additional piece of fire lighter material. The only other thing that's on this, uh, where and I added a mod as well, is these actually have a little hole for a drawing pin. And the one mod that is not seen on my earlier video, because I did this later, and I'm just going to point, we're using this drawing pin, as you'll notice, there's another drawing pin. So what I did is I added an additional hole so that now, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's now uh, one and two. So that's one hole there, which is a standard hole, and I've added a second hole, which allows me to have two drawing pins. And my thinking behind that is sometimes in a say a, a survival situation for example you might want to modify one of these drawing pins into something like a fish hook because you can use the pliers put that in there now the first one has a slot so that one goes in easily the second one you have to cajole a little bit sometimes because it doesn't always want to go back in nicely. And it's giving me a hard time now because, of course, why wouldn't it? I'm actually, do forgive me, I'm going to put my glasses on for a second so I can see what I'm doing and put it back in, oh, in the correct way. But by having that second hole, there, 
There we go. By having that second drawing pin, if I did feel the need to use the drawing pin to make uh, an emergency fish hook, uh, I'd still have a drawing pin left. And if I did lose my fish hook, I have enough to make a second one. So that seemed like a good idea to me. So I'm not really going to spend more time on this. I will tell you there's going to be a link in the description going to the original video where I show this knife off and modify it. Uh, but that is my Swiss champ, which I've modded. And this is literally my everyday carry. I do wear this every day. And I, I can honestly use one or more of the tools in it at least once a day, if not more. This is literally a toolkit you can hold in the palm of your hand. It's the standard 91 millimeter size of Swiss Army knife, which in my opinion is an extremely practical thing. There are no issues with carrying this in terms of legality. So this is a, a legal everyday carry and it's a practical everyday carry and I couldn't recommend it highly enough. So that's the first one of our little trinity. The second knife we're going to look at is one of the 110 millimeter uh, Victorinox knives, and this one is called the Work Champ. It is a little bit bigger than the Swiss Champ. It has slightly fewer tools, but it is a good, robust tool and tool kit in its own right. I've got this lanyard on it because normally when I uh, wear this one with my kit, I have that clicked so as not to lose it. But this is intended, by me at least, for use in the field for when I'm doing a sort of a ultralight bushcraft situation. Uh, this knife is not modded except for one thing, which I'll show you in a moment, but I am going to be doing another video quite soon where I'm going to mod this knife uh, in the way not in exactly the same, but in a similar way to the way I modded my Swiss Champ. So that's the video that's coming up in the not too distant future. Now the Work Champ has been around for a few years. This is the current design. There was a different design where you had a slide lock on the side. They discontinued that one. This is the current model. So let's have a look at what we have by way of blades. Well, first of all, on the outermost, we have to begin with our standard can opener with small screwdriver and on this here we have locking at 90 degrees or semi-locking at 90 degrees or actually properly locking in the 180 degree because there is actually a liner lock for that this is the screwdriver uh, bottle opener and wire stripper and to close that I'm going to need to press the liner lock in so that I can actually close that. One difference actually between this and the standard can opener is the screwdriver head on this is actually wider than normal. So it is a little bit unusual in that regard, uh, but it is quite a serious heavy duty screwdriver. So that's a useful thing. And obviously when you have the small head screwdriver, you can deal with larger or smaller screws with this quite happily. Next in, we have the proper knife blade. So that is a little bit longer, a little bit larger than the uh, standard 91 millimeter ones, but also it's held in place with a liner lock. And one of the interesting things that I've noticed about this is it does semi-lock in the 90 degree position. Now, this means if you're going to do something like batoning, and I would never baton anything very large with this. If it's more than an inch and a half, uh, you shouldn't really be batoning with any kind of pocket knife. But if you baton with your knife straight, uh, you can actually damage it. So on the other hand, it will semi-lock in this position, and that's not going to put the same kind of strain if you're doing a little bit of light batoning on something that isn't too thick. Uh, so, for example, if you were making a maul, uh, if you had, let's say, a three-inch uh, piece of wood and you use the saw to cut around and you're going to baton little bits of the edges away, this would be suitable for that, but I wouldn't do it on anything too heavy. However, it is actually quite a decent uh, all-round camp blade 
although like all Swiss Army knives, the actual blade itself is relatively thin, so there are limitations. Take those seriously. This also has the pliers, but unlike the 91 millimeter version, you have a little thumb nick here because it doesn't go all the way across. And that's because on the opposite side of that, you have your Phillips head screwdriver there. And indeed, if I close that up and close the pliers, which are otherwise exactly the same as the last pliers, next to that we have our scissors, which again are standard Victorinox scissors. So you've got a good pair of scissors with you. And on the underside, underneath there, we can flip open. We have a second Phillips head screwdriver, but a much smaller one. So this is, again, designed to give you a bit more by way of tools. Uh, so that's quite good. And then next to that, we've got the wood saw, which obviously is a little bit longer than the last one. So that's going to be a little more practical to use in the field. And finally, next to the wood saw, we have, again, the files, which can be used to file wood, can be used to file metal. And of course, this edge here uh, allows you to do some sawing through metal. Uh, I wouldn't expect it to work as well as a hacksaw, but in, when you've got nothing else, believe me, it's nice to have something that will actually work. Now, in addition to that, you have back here, once again, the standard Victorinox tweezers. And also on this side, you have the toothpick, except in this case, again, I've replaced the toothpick with a Firefly ferro rod. So I've got an emergency fire lighter, fire starter in there, which is nice. And like I have with the other knife, we have the micro screwdriver and another spiral tinder. The spiral tinder, by the way, is made by the same company as makes the Firefly or the Fire Ant, which is another ferro rod uh, that you can get for this. And again, it just screws into the bottle opener. So that's quite handy. And finally, of course, we have the awl. Uh, unlike the awl on the last knife, you notice there's no hole in there, so this can't be used for sewing, but again, it can be used for reaming or drilling small holes. Now, those are all the features. Obviously, you have the, the ring for a lanyard, which they all have. Uh, these are all the features of this particular knife, the WorkChamp. And the WorkChamp, like I say, to my mind, is an excellent carry uh, for lightweight, going into the woods, being able to do some bushcraft. It's a practical tool. It's not the biggest and heaviest, but it's not as small as the standard. Again, you're looking at something which, if I put these next to each other, it is physically larger. Uh, for example, the big blade and the small blade on the 91 millimeter Swiss Army knives, they're both good and they're both practical but they might be a little small for certain bushcraft activities, whereas the larger blade here is just that little bit bigger and can be maybe used for slightly more practical use. Now, as I say, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing, or over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing some modding. And this particular knife is going to be modded in a similar way to what I've done here. Uh, so that's a video for you to look forward to, and I hope you watch that one and enjoy it because I think the work champ is a practical and useful tool that could be made even more practical and even more useful. Both of these you'll notice are quite wide. I will say that the Swiss champ is a whisker wider than the work champ. Uh, they both fill the hand quite well and you need a, a slightly more delicate grip on the uh, Swiss champ. Work champs slightly narrower, so it's a little even a little bit easier. But neither of these are a problem to hold. However, that brings us to our next knife. Well, we've looked at the Swiss champ and the work champ. 
Now we're going to be looking at one of the Ranger Grip knives. Now this is the Ranger Grip 79. It is, for all practical intents and purposes, identical to the Ranger Grip 55, except for this little loop here. Uh, the 55 has uh, a blade with a thumb nick that you open two-handed. I thought with this one it might be nice to actually have this loop, which allows for one-handed opening. Uh, the blade is slightly longer. In fact, if I compare it to the work champ, you'll notice it's just a little bit longer uh, and also slightly different in its design. It has some features about it which are actually quite attractive. You have these nice lines. I will show you that right here, this little section right from there to there, is not sharp. Now that's functional because there's a stud in here which when you close the knife, uh, it sits on that stud. And if that were sharpened, it would damage the blade. So from this point forward, it is sharp. From this point back, it is not. It's tapered. Uh, normally, you'll notice there's more of a chunky little thing here. And they've managed to eliminate the chunky thing, but you still need that there. So it looks more attractive. But again, you don't sharpen it all the way to the base. Some people have done that. They've not done themselves any favors doing that. And it isn't necessary. And to be honest, uh, it does mean if you cinch up on it to do something very fine, uh, you don't have to worry about cutting your finger. Uh, but in normal use, this is actually quite practical. One of the things about the Ranger Grip knives is the logo on the side is quite functional because that logo is a button. And if I hold press that button, you will notice if you look here, some movement. Now what you're looking at is the liner lock because this locks in the open position. But if I press that button, it moves the liner lock out of position. Now, to be fair, I can try and move that liner lock with my finger, but it, it's really unlike this liner lock, which has a bit that projects up to make it easy for me to grip so that I can move that out of the way to close the blade. This is somewhat recessed, so I can't really get at it easily, and it's a real problem. But that button actually... There's a mechanism inside, so when I press the button, the liner lock just moves over and allows me to close the knife. So this locks open in a safe position and then closes quite easily as long as you press the logo button. Now, you'll notice I've been opening this two-handed. You can open it one-handed. That's practical, obviously. But you can also open it two-handed, and I would say that in the winter... When you may be wearing gloves, a thumb nick, such as is on here, is going to be very difficult to access unless you take your gloves off. But even if you're wearing gloves, I mean, without gloves, you can actuate that with one hand very easily. That's no problem. With gloves on, I think that would be a little more difficult. But even with gloves on, I can pinch that through the gloves, pull it open, very easily. So this is practical deployment. So I would say if you're talking about using this in a bushcraft context in the winter where it's cold and you're wearing gloves, that's going to be a real boon. Another thing about deployment is you'll notice is a little piece of metal that projects out here. Well, that's actually the tip of the saw. It makes it very easy for me to begin to deploy normally, but if I were wearing gloves, I could still grab that and without taking my gloves off, deploy the saw blade. Now, this is about four inches long, so it is the longest of the blades of all of them. It's actually quite heavy duty. And like all of them, that has a nice sharp 90 degree spine, which is very good for using against with ferro rods. Uh, being the longest saw blade of all of these, it's the most practical and easy to use in the field. Uh, I consider that to be quite a useful thing. Now, in addition to that, the 79, again, has the standard 
bottle opener, screwdriver, wire stripper. And on the other side, we have the standard uh, Victorinox tin opener and small screwdriver. Uh, I have, I, amongst other things in the description, I'm going to have my link to the video I made on how to use these because uh, there are different kinds of tin openers on pocket knives and the Victorinox one goes forward and is quite a different one. So you can watch that video to see how that works. Now on this we have, once again, standard tweezers. And the toothpick. And on the back we have the awl with hole for sewing so you can do canvas repairs with this or drill a hole and of course we have our uh, corkscrew now i believe it's the 78 that they have where this has a phillips head screwdriver and some people like to buy that because they think well i don't drink wine and so i don't need a corkscrew well you're entitled to be wrong but that's wrong because to be fair first of all uh you do need a corkscrew because some wine is good, but that's a separate issue. But also because this is a practical aspect in its own right. On this one, you'll notice I haven't actually put a firefly. What I've put on this one is the fire ant. And so I have a small ferro rod that twists onto there. And this corkscrew, by the way, is sufficiently long that instead of having just one spiral uh, tinder, I have one and a half spiral tinders on this. So I've got one and a half spiral tinders, which in my opinion is enough to light at least three fires and a fire ant. So in terms of emergency fire lighting, I've got quite a useful capability held in that corkscrew, making this an extremely useful, you, you don't need to be opening wine bottles to justify having a corkscrew. In fairness, I do use these to open wine bottles occasionally. But my main reason for wanting this, as you see, I've got it in all three of these and in some of the other Victorinox ones as well. I have at the very least fire lighters built into there. And in this case, and in the case of at least one of my other Victorinox knives, I've got the fire ant fire lighter there. So it does actually give me emergency fire lighting capabilities. Now, that's it really for this one in terms of its features. So one thing I will say is that the Ranger Grip um, 79 is certainly compared to the, uh, the, work, the Swiss Champ and the Work Champ, it's a little bit light on features. That said, again, in the next few weeks, just as I'm going to mod my Work Champ, just as I've already modded my Swiss Champ, I will be modding the 79 and adding some very useful features that I think you're going to like. So I hope you found this interesting and useful, and it's given you some ideas of some of the different sizes and different styles. Uh, you, If you want a knife that is tool rich uh, for everyday carry, I can't really recommend the Swiss Champ highly enough. But if you want something that's a little bit more heavy duty for work in the field, this Work Champ is excellent, but if you're very much more focused on bushcraft and you want something a little bit lighter in weight, uh, maybe a little bit narrower in the grip and also uh, a little larger in the blades, then the Ranger Grip is an excellent choice. Uh, when you see how I mod these two knives in the way that I've modded that one, I think you're going to like them even more. And uh, so I hope to see you again soon. And when we do these, do hit subscribe as well as like and do share and also uh, hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted when I do these two uh, videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed all of that. Have a good one.